The Ten Roads to Riches. The Ways the Wealthy Got There, by Ken Fisher is a book that explores the various paths that people have taken to achieve financial success. Ken Fisher, a self-made billionaire and founder of the money management firm Fisher Investments, believes that getting rich involves an element of self-interest that some may find distasteful, but he also highlights that wealth can be derived from creating a positive societal impact. The book is organized into 10 different paths, with each path broken down into 10 chapters. Each path represents a different approach to achieving financial success, and the book provides insights and advice from successful individuals who have taken that particular path. The first path is the richest road. Ken emphasizes that successful entrepreneurs don't just create a product or service, they create a vision that inspires people and solves a problem in a unique way. They are passionate about their idea and relentlessly pursue it, even when faced with setbacks and failures. Additionally, they are not afraid to take risks and think outside the box. Starting a business involves a lot of hard work and dedication. Ken advises entrepreneurs to be prepared to work long hours and to have the discipline to stay focused on their goals. He also emphasizes the importance of building a strong team of like-minded individuals who share the same vision and work ethic. Ken stresses the importance of being patient and persistent in pursuing one's entrepreneurial dreams. He points out that success rarely comes overnight and that it often takes years of hard work and perseverance to achieve significant results. However, he believes that with the right mindset, attitude, and approach, anyone can achieve success in their entrepreneurial endeavors. Examples of successful entrepreneurs who have taken the richest road path include Elon Musk, who co-founded PayPal and went on to create SpaceX and Tesla, and Steve Jobs, who co-founded Apple and helped revolutionize the computer and smartphone industries. Both Musk and Jobs were known for their vision, passion, and dedication to their work, and they inspired others to believe in their ideas and pursue their own dreams. The second path is Pardon Me, That's My Throne, which is a path to becoming rich focuses on achieving the top position in a successful company. According to Ken, this path requires a significant amount of dedication and hard work to climb the corporate ladder to reach the coveted CEO position. Ken advises those interested in this path to aim small by starting with smaller companies and working their way up, gaining experience and building a reputation for themselves along the way. Once a position of leadership is attained, Ken emphasizes the importance of recruiting talented employees and leading by example. By showing up often and connecting with employees, a CEO can build trust and foster a strong company culture that drives success. Additionally, Ken advises that successful CEOs are those who are continually learning and growing, both personally and professionally. Successful individuals who have taken this path include Jack Welch, who led General Electric for over two decades and is considered one of the most successful CEOs of all time. Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google, is another example of someone who has climbed the corporate ladder to achieve great success. Both Welch and Pichai started their careers at smaller companies and worked their way up to the top through hard work and dedication. The third path is along for the ride, ride alongs, which involves riding the coattails of a boss. According to Fisher, not everyone is cut out to be a CEO or leader of a company, and that is okay. The chapter suggests that one possible path to wealth is to become a key supporter early on in a business and ride the coattails of a boss or founder. This could include being the right-hand person to the boss or the second most important person in the company. This path to wealth relies on getting rewarded well for one's contribution when the business grows. For example, stock options become valuable when the company goes public or is given a share of the profits. This approach to wealth is what many people who work at startups hope to achieve, as it can lead to substantial financial rewards. However, Fisher also acknowledges that there is a risk involved, as not all startups succeed, and some may even go bankrupt. While this path to wealth may not be suitable for everyone, it can be practical for those with practical skills, such as accountants, office managers, and legal advisors. They can contribute to the growth of a company by providing necessary support and expertise, while still benefiting from the financial rewards of success. Two examples of individuals who have achieved wealth through this path include Charlie Munger, the right-hand man to Warren Buffett at Berkshire Hathaway, and Tim Cook, who served as the chief operating officer under Steve Jobs at Apple before becoming CEO himself. These individuals played a critical role in the growth of their respective companies and were able to reap the financial benefits of their contributions. The fourth path to wealth, 
rich and famous, is a popular path that involves using fame and celebrity status to generate wealth through various means, such as advertising gigs and product endorsements. Many people aspire to this path, as it offers the allure of both wealth and public recognition. Ken emphasizes that this path often begins early in life, as many celebrities and social media influencers start building their brand and audience at a young age. This requires a lot of hard work, dedication, and often involves an element of luck. However, with the right strategy and approach, it is possible to build a substantial following and become a household name. The key to success on this path is to find a niche and create content that resonates with your audience. This may involve creating a persona that is entertaining or relatable, sharing personal stories and experiences, or providing valuable information and insights that people can't find elsewhere. Successful individuals who have taken this path include Kim Kardashian, who has leveraged her reality TV fame to build a massive social media following and launch her own business empire. Rihanna is another example of a celebrity who has used her fame to build a successful business, launching her own makeup and fashion lines that have generated millions of dollars in revenue. In addition to traditional celebrities, many YouTubers and social media influencers hope to achieve celebrity status and make money through sponsored content and advertising revenue. However, as with any path to wealth, there are no guarantees of success, and it often requires a lot of hard work and persistence to achieve significant financial success. The fifth path is marry well, really well, which may seem ridiculous but is still a path that some people intentionally seek out for financial reasons. In this chapter, Fisher provides insights on where to hunt for the richest Americans, including attending Ivy League schools or prestigious events and meeting people through elite social clubs and charitable organizations. He also notes that there are risks involved, such as the potential for a messy divorce and the loss of financial security, and emphasizes that this path should only be taken if there is genuine love and compatibility in the relationship. Examples of successful individuals who have taken this path to wealth include Wendy Dang Murdoch, who married media mogul Rupert Murdoch and eventually received a settlement of $1.8 billion in their divorce, and Mackenzie Scott, who received a reported $35 billion in her divorce from Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos. While these examples may seem extreme, they demonstrate that marrying a wealthy individual can indeed lead to significant financial gain. However, Fisher also notes that marrying well isn't necessarily limited to just finding a wealthy spouse. He points out that building a strong social network can also lead to financial success, as it can open doors to new opportunities and connections. For example, Befriending a successful entrepreneur or investor can lead to potential business partnerships or investments. Fisher acknowledges that marrying well may not be a path for everyone, and that it's important to prioritize love and compatibility over financial gain. However, for those who are open to the idea, he provides useful insights on how to go about it and the potential rewards and risks involved. The sixth path, steal it, like a pirate, but legally, is one of the most controversial paths to wealth. It involves becoming a lawyer, specializing in plaintiff's law, and finding cases with the potential for million-dollar settlements and payouts. Fisher argues that by focusing on huge civil cases, lawyers can earn a third to half of the settlements without upfront payment, making it a lucrative path to wealth. While some people may view this path as unethical, Fisher believes that it is a perfectly legal way to earn wealth. He emphasizes the importance of finding cases with a high potential for payout and building a strong case. This path requires a strong understanding of the law and an ability to find cases that can result in a large payout. Two high-profile lawsuits resulted in huge damages awards. In one, a class of consumers harmed by smoking cigarettes won $144.8 billion in a lawsuit against Philip Morris, R.J. Reynolds, and other cigarette manufacturers. The other was a lawsuit against General Motors that resulted in a $4.9 billion award to a family whose van exploded in a collision causing permanent injuries to six passengers. The damages were primarily punitive and meant to send a message about corporate responsibility. The seventh path is OPM, not opium, where most of the richest are, which is a path to wealth that has been widely followed by business graduates and MBA holders. This path involves managing financial assets, giving financial advice, or selling financial products to earn a commission. Fisher emphasizes the importance of being able to sell and having access to opportunities for earning money. However, he also warns readers of the prevalence of fraudsters and scammers in the financial industry and provides tips on how to identify them. 
One way to enter the financial industry is by working for a private equity firm, which raises money from institutional investors to invest in companies or assets. This path requires a combination of analytical skills and salesmanship to convince investors to commit their money to the firm's funds. Another path is working for a brokerage firm or bank, where one can sell financial products like stocks, bonds, or insurance policies to earn a commission. In addition, some individuals choose to become financial advisors, where they provide financial planning and investment advice to clients for a fee. To succeed in this path, one needs to have a solid understanding of financial markets, regulations, and investment vehicles. Good communication and networking skills are also essential to building a client base and growing one's reputation in the industry. However, one must be aware that the financial industry is highly competitive, and only a few individuals achieve significant wealth through this path. Examples of individuals who have achieved wealth through managing other people's money include Ray Dalio, the founder of Bridgewater Associates, one of the world's largest hedge funds, and John Paulson, a hedge fund manager who became famous for his successful bet against the subprime mortgage market in 2007. The eighth path is Invent Income, which is all about developing intellectual property that can be monetized. This could be an idea, invention, or creative work that can be licensed or sold for income. This path requires creativity, innovation, and a willingness to take risks. One of the advantages of this path is that once the intellectual property is created, it can provide a stream of income without requiring constant effort or maintenance. One example of an inventor who achieved wealth through this path is Jay-Z, who started his own record label and created a clothing line, but his biggest success came from creating his own music streaming service, Tidal. J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter series, is another example of someone who has achieved wealth through invention. Rowling's creation of the Wizarding World has resulted in numerous books, movies, and merchandise, providing her with a steady stream of income. Fisher emphasizes the importance of having a viable product that can provide annuity-like income. This means that intellectual property should be something that has long-term value and can provide a consistent income stream over time. It's also important to protect intellectual property through patents, copyrights, or other legal means to ensure that others can't profit from it without permission. The ninth path is trumping the land barons, which is a classic path to wealth that involves buying real estate and renting it out. Fisher emphasizes that this route to wealth requires patience and discipline, as well as a deep understanding of the real estate market. He advises against flipping houses, as it is a high-risk strategy that may not yield enough profit to cover the purchase price plus repairs. Instead, Fisher recommends buying property, making basic repairs or modest upgrades in line with the market and then renting it out for reliable rental income. Fisher also notes that this path requires careful analysis of rental yields, mortgage rates, and property taxes to ensure that the investment generates a positive cash flow. He warns against getting too emotionally attached to properties and advises readers to always keep their long-term investment goals in mind. Fisher also encourages readers to consider investing in real estate investment trusts, known as right which are similar to mutual funds but invest in real estate assets. Donald Trump is perhaps one of the most well-known real estate investors who has used this approach to build wealth. He started his real estate career by working for his father's company, and eventually went on to purchase and develop properties in New York City and other locations around the world. Trump's approach involved finding undervalued properties, negotiating favorable purchase terms, and making strategic investments to improve the value and income potential of those properties. Another notable real estate investor who has used this approach is Li Ka-Sheng, a Hong Kong-based businessman who is often referred to as Asia's richest man. Ka-Sheng started his career by working in a plastics factory, but eventually went on to build a vast real estate empire through careful investments and strategic acquisitions. He is known for his patient approach to real estate investing, and for his ability to identify undervalued properties that can generate reliable rental income over time. Ken McElroy is another successful real estate investor who has used this approach to build wealth. He is the founder of MC Companies, a real estate investment and management company that specializes in multifamily properties. McElroy's approach involves finding properties that are likely to generate reliable rental income over time and investing in upgrades and improvements that can boost the value and income potential of those properties. The path of investing in real estate and renting it out can be a powerful way to build wealth over time. 
While it requires patience and careful analysis, it can provide a reliable stream of income and long-term capital appreciation. The tenth path is the road more traveled, which discusses the common route of saving and investing in the stock market as a means of building wealth. While this path may not make one extremely rich, it can lead to a comfortable retirement with a few million dollars. Fisher emphasizes the importance of getting a good paying job, saving more money as income increases, figuring out how much one wants to earn, and calculating how much money needs to be saved each month to reach that goal. By earning more money, being frugal, or a combination of both, individuals can save money and make their money work for them by primarily owning stocks and staying disciplined with them. However, he cautions against getting too caught up in market trends or making impulsive investment decisions. Staying disciplined and sticking to a long-term investment plan is key to achieving success in the stock market. While the road to wealth through saving and investing may not be the fastest or most glamorous, it is a tried and true method that can lead to a comfortable retirement and financial security. Anyone can build wealth over time by focusing on earning a good income, saving as much as possible, and investing wisely. Overall, Fisher presents a comprehensive guide to achieving extreme wealth through a variety of paths, each with its own advantages and challenges. While some of the paths may not be accessible or appealing to everyone, the book offers valuable insights and inspiration for anyone looking to build wealth and achieve financial freedom. If you're interested in this book, simply follow the link in the description to purchase it. Now, when it comes to building wealth, what path will you take? Are you sticking to conventional methods, or do you have a more innovative approach in mind? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. And if this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. Thanks.